I'm here in Salt Lake City, and I'm going to a business that, quite frankly, I never thought I would come to. It's called Harvest Lane Honey, and it's a multi-generational family that makes beekeeping kits that they send to your home. But this is going to be anything but a sweet deal. Keep your feet stomping when we go over there. They do like to crawl up your legs. Rhonda. <laughs> oh. The business has lost $7 million. The business is insolvent. Maybe I'm not the right person to run this. To run the company? Yeah. I hate it. I hate being the CEO of this. You do? Yeah. Our deal doesn't look like it's possible. I'm Marcus Limonis, and I risk my own money to help businesses. I love investing in American businesses. I just don't want anything to really change. It's not always easy, but I do it to create jobs, and I do it to make money. You have a deal? Let's rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> this is The Profit. I am Mindy Waite, and I am the CEO and one of the founders of Harvest Lane Honey. We manufacture all the hives and woodenware for backyard beekeeping, and we sell everything that they need from the bees to the equipment to the protective clothing. Like most businesses, Harvest Lane Honey's business was born out of necessity. My husband and my mom were like, hey, let's be beekeepers. Mike and I are the other half of the business. Jason and I just wanted to pollinate the world. We have 34 employees working for us, but it literally started in our garage in 2008. And there it's just grown rapidly. And we're in all 50 states, and we're in six different countries throughout the world. But as the business grew, so did their debt. And now everyone is looking to Mindy for guidance. Dan and I have been working on price increases. I'm glad you're on it then. She is a queen bee. There's no doubt about it. But without a clear plan or solution in place, they've now called me. You got to not freak out. You got to not freak out. Now, we know there's an environmental issue around the world with bees becoming extinct. What I worry about more than that is how generational businesses can also become extinct. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Marcus. I'm Mindy. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Jason. Nice to meet you. Jason, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Are you guys a couple? Yeah, yes. this, is okay. my, this is my husband. So who started this business? Jason and my mom started it, just getting into beekeeping. We actually sell the bees, and we sell all the equipment, everything that you need to be a beekeeper. I mean, isn't there enough bees in the environment? To... No. Go ahead. So the bees have been declined over the years. She gave you permission to talk. I know. <laughs> I, know. Okay. I, know. I, I think she's so good. <laughs> so who owns the business? I do with my mom. So we're 50-50. Okay. So your mom, is she also work yeah, here? she is here. Do you want to meet her? I would love to meet her. Okay. We'll yeah, right come on down. This is kind of our beginnings. We were selling direct to the consumer there, and we pivoted in 2013 and began selling to retailers, farm and ranch stores across the nation. Um, True Value is one of them, Tractor Supply. Who runs the business? Would be Mindy, she's the CEO. Oh, you are the CEO, okay. Yeah. And you took that from your mom, or your mom gave it to you, or how did that work? She's Who bossy, that's why she's got it. I'm sorry, I heard somebody say something. She's bossy. Who's that? Is that the voice of God? It is. You can come out. <laughs> so I said she's bossy. How are you? I'm Marcus. I'm, I'm Rhonda. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So she's the boss? You're not the boss? Well, I, I've got more of the, the retail experience. So Rhonda runs the finances. and. She... Do you call her Rhonda? Yeah. We, we do in the business. I'm going to call you mom while I'm here. You can call me mom. My first impression of this family is that they have a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm. I want to make sure that all this excitement that they have is translating into the excitement around the actual business. How are you, sir? Good. Nice to meet you, How Marcus. are you? Nice Very to meet good. you. <laughs> and what is your role here? Good question. Is this your husband? It is. He does all the legal. Yes. How long so. have you two been married? Not long enough. Oh, good answer. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 45 years. 45? Should we take a tour? Love to. Okay. All right, we'll go on out. Apparently, you're the leader. We'll yes, follow okay, along. okay. <laughs> we bring our retailers in here um, when we're setting them up. The number one selling item is this. This is the kit. So it's everything you see here. Where are they manufactured today? In the back. So nothing is manufactured overseas. Our iron tools, yes. our clothing. They come from overseas, but 100% of the hives are made here. And what are the margins on this skew? 
were about 50% last year. And how much revenue does this queue generate a year? Like, I'd say seven, $800,000. What prevents this from being a $2 million skew? Capacity. Just capacity. Capacity. Okay. And just so I can clarify, what is this thing doing? This is where this the action happens. This is where the comb happens. happens at. So this is underneath that plastic, there's the comb that gets built on there. And so the bees create that comb. Oh my gosh, comb. it smells. I know, it's good, huh? Just scrape it off and eat it. You could eat it. Your starter kit is your flower. Mm -hmm. You're trying to lure the customer into the lifestyle. Yes. Right. Yeah. Once exactly. they see how easy it is, they become addicted to it. Mm. Yeah. And then they bolt on all the other stuff. Yeah. Yep. How yeah. much of your business is online? They equate to like less than 10% of ourselves. It's an area we can go into. That sucks. We got to fix that. There is no magic formula to how much business they should be doing online compared to what they wholesale. In order for this business to get more profitable, I would expect them to do at least 30% of their total revenue direct to consumer. That'll change the profit profile of this business overnight. I want to see the warehouse. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's a, a big facility. Bigger. Yeah. How many square feet is the whole building? 35,000. We'll go back to the back and uh, show you where all the magic happens. When the lumber comes in, they'll cut it down into planks. Can I do one with you? Sure. Step one. Step one. So from this spot, you have an operator that measures it, and then he comes over here and he cuts it to length. He's actually servicing that, so it's down. So you're stopped. Correct. Is this where the QC happens? Yeah. Why aren't they QCing along the way? They have been good there, but by the get time they get here. You mean from right there to right here, something happens to it? It bothers me that in the first 10 minutes of being in this fabrication shop, that you're able to see the inefficiency without a lot of science or study. When you first got here, yeah. you were like, um, I'd even want to see it be piece one, two, three, four, pop. How did I know which four to get? Good size length. But they're not organized that way. How would I know? There's our box assembly machine. Then it should be squared and held. And that's, well, a couple of misfires. Or not, some of the- That wasn't that, me. No, when this happens, we'll manually shoot it in the spot. Efficiency is about taking your time and understanding how to get more out of it. But when we stood here and started talking about how to crank it up, you can tell that they hadn't really thought about it. I really love what you guys are doing here. Okay. You're providing a lot of jobs. You are contributing to the health of the environment and crops and farmers. But it seems like there's opportunity for enhancements. Oh, yeah. We're able to put out about 400 boxes a day. What should it be? Probably need 1,000 boxes a day. Is there enough demand to support 2,000 boxes a day? Yeah. The thing preventing you from going from 100 to 2,000 yeah. is in the process and the equipment. Yeah, absolutely. And what's preventing you from having more equipment in the right process? Capital. In this particular case, I'd say capital is a contributor, but it's not the reason that things are inefficient. They have to be able to plan things out in a way that doesn't have the employee buzzing around here. It's not as organized as it could be. Can you run a second shift? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Second Do you run a second shift? Not right now. No, it's hard to find employees. Yeah, Utah's labor it market, is. it's 3% unemployment. Have you ever used a tool like ZipRecruiter or anything like that? They've had tremendous success with ZipRecruiter. Okay. I think that's something we could look at. I'd like to maybe just sit down and look at the financials. Okay, cool. So let's just go through 19. Yeah. Two and a half million dollars of revenue, mm -hmm. about a million dollars of gross. Yeah. And then your interest and finance charges are a half a million dollars? That's where our biggest problem is, is we're servicing heavy debt. It's very expensive. Okay. The net income loss after interest expense of $500,000 is just over a million dollars in 2019. Yeah. All right. And then 2020 came and everybody wanted bees. Sales go from 2,498,000 in 2019 to 4.6 million. Total operating profit in 2020 is a loss of 160,000. Yes. 